Hi friends, it's Deanna here today and today we're going to be working on the Lakeisha dress and top pattern. I'm making the dress version with the straight skirt and the flared skirt and I am making a short sleeve version. Um, I love this pattern. I'm super excited about it. I love the elastic neckline. Um, so let's get started. <laughs> Alright friends, after I cut everything out, I like to keep it, the pieces together just so I know what they are. But um, we're going to get started with our bodice. Here's our bodice bottom and what we're going to do is our bodice top, we're going to gather the bottom of it to fit this bodice bottom. So to do that, we're going to mark where these little dots are here, the gathering spots. And I'm just going to put a pin here and here. And then I'm gonna head over to my sewing machine and put in a gathering stitch here at the bottom from this pin to this pin so I can gather this bottom piece to fit here into my, uh, I'm sorry, this top piece to fit into my bottom piece. So to do that, I'm gonna put in two rows of basting stitches and a basting stitch is the longest stitch length on my sewing machine. So I think mine is a five. And I'm going to do it like a quarter inch away from the edge and then one a quarter inch away from that just right next to each other. But you can use whatever kind of gathering method you like to use to gather this little bottom to fit this bodice. Do not backstitch when you start. Just leave a little tail because that's what you're going to use to gather with. Also, do not backstitch at the end. Just pull it up, pull it, pull the thread and cut it. And then I'm going to do another stitch right next to it. All right, now I've got this bottom piece and I'm gonna grab my um, bobbin thread here from the back and I'm gonna pull on it and gather. But before I do, I like to go ahead and mark the center and you can mark it however you want to. Sometimes I like to do a little notch and then I'm gonna mark the center of this as well. So that way I know exactly where the center is so I can go from the center out. Okay, now that little notch that I just marked, it's just tiny, tiny. So when I sew this on, it will be um, eaten up by my seam allowance. So it's not going to mess anything up. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull on these basting stitches, the bobbin thread of the basting stitches and gather. That gathering should fit right here where that middle piece is to the side here, and then the rest will go up the side. You see that? So it kind of the the edge hits right at the where it starts turning, and then it goes like this. So then I'm gonna pull on the other side as well, and then we're gonna face them right sides together and sew them together. So we're matching up. I folded it right sides together. And I'm matching up the sides. I matched up where I marked the middle notch. And I'm coming here and then I'm going turning over so that I have the rest of it goes this way to that corner. So now when I open it up, it'll be just like this. And here on the side, you have this arm side, your side, and then the rest of your side, which will be attached to your, this will be straight. You'll fold this seam going up and this will be straight and you'll attach your sides here after attaching your sleeves. So we're going to go ahead and sew that together. Now for this part, it is recommended that you put some clear elastic here as you're sewing this up. So I'm going to go grab some clear elastic and I'm just going to place it right on top and sew it into the seam as I'm sewing these two layers together. Um, I'm not stretching the elastic. I'm just placing it in there for a little bit of stability, extra stability. All right, some people find it easier to go ahead and zigzag stitch it on first um, to the seam, and that's fine, you can do that. Um, zigzag stitch it or baste it on first so that way it doesn't slide on you. I just like to grab it here and have like a little tail where I can put it under and just kind of hold it stable. Then put my needle through it as I'm gonna sew over it and then just kind of hold it at the edge so it's getting cut in the seam around. I'm not pulling on it, I'm just holding it. 
and I'm holding it like right against the edge so that the knife doesn't cut it. Um, but again, it's getting cut in there. So there is a clear elastic. If you were to look really closely, you could see it shining. It's cut in that seam right there. It's just in there. Now I'm just going to trim it right off. All right, here's my bodice. I've got my arm side. I've got a little bit of my top bodice and then the, bo the bottom bodice. And now we're going to attach our sleeves. Now I did mark my sleeves with my front and my back to make sure that I attach the right side to the right side. And so what we're going to do is attach the front part of my sleeve with the front part of my bodice here. It should just match up real nicely. And we're going to do that on both sides. That's the one sleeve and then the other sleeve. Now you may be wondering why I already have it attached to the back. I am re-recording this part right here on the sleeves because on the first time I did not do clear elastic at the waistband and I wanted to go back and do the clear elastic on the waistband. So that's why you'll see this because next step, I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do, which is gonna be attach the sleeves to the back. But first I'm going to sew these front sleeves on um, right sides together. Grabbing the other side of the sleeve, the back side, and I'm gonna place it to the back bodice, right sides together here at that curve. And then I'm gonna sew that on as well on both sides. All right, now once the sleeves are sewn, we're gonna go ahead and match up this armpit area here at the shoulder, at the sleeve side, and all the way down the sleeve. And then all the way down the bodice. Now remember this seam allowance should be going towards the top, so this should match really nicely here. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. All right, let's sew those up. Now, while I'm sewing that up, I'm also going to go ahead and fold the neckline half an inch to the wrong side and press it. And then I'm going to top stitch it down, leaving a gap here, two to three inch gap, actually in the back. I'm going to leave it in the back where I'm going to insert my elastic. So we're folding over a half an inch all the way around and top stitching that down. That's gonna be the casing for our elastic that's gonna go around our neckline. Now again, I like to do things all at once. So that's why I'm doing this at the same time that I'm doing my uh, side seam. But you can go ahead and go sew your side seam first and then come back and do this um, part right here. And as you can tell, I'm not ironing, I'm not steaming right now. Um, because I think my clips are enough, but if you are one that, you know, like ma making sure that it's going to stay down, some fabrics are a little bit more, a little bit harder to work with when it comes to steaming, uh, when it comes to keeping it down when you're top stitching, I'm using this double brush poly and it's actually been really nice <laughs> to me today. So it's actually been good at, you know, like letting me fold it and everything. So I think I'm going to be okay. All right, so I'm going to be sewing this with a cover stitch, but if you don't have a cover stitch, no worries. You can use a um, stretch stitch on your sewing machine, like a zigzag stitch, lightning bolt stitch, or a triple stitch would work. Okay, remember you're leaving a gap in the back where you're gonna insert your elastic, so don't close it all the way around. Okay, I'm leaving that gap right there. that I'll come back and close later. Alrighty, now I'm going to use a safety pin and we're going to feed that elastic right through that gap that we left at the neckline. Now, if you have the flutter, the cap sleeve, I'm sorry, you're going to do the same step to your sleeve. So we're gonna grab our sleeve next and I'm going to fold my hem and then top stitch it all the way around and then I'm going to fit my elastic just like I'm doing on my neckline. So that will be my next step.
well that and um to meet your elastic at the end and then zigzag stitch it close and then close that gap here at the back now, what I like to do sometimes, because I'm not always sure about my elastic width, I'm sorry, my 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 lights are blinking. I don't know why. Hopefully we won't lose power. Anyway, it's like a Halloween special. Anyway, so so I uh I uh lost track of that. Um when we are <laughs> When I'm done putting this together and sewing the elastic together, I will try it on before I close that gap to make sure that it fits correctly. If I have to make the elastic uh, longer or shorter, if it's not tight enough around my neck and I have to like cut it off a little bit and everything, it's just easier to do if you go ahead and um, don't close it first. Oh my goodness. It literally, it's like, you see it? I don't know if it's a light bulb or if it's actually my... I don't know what's going on. All right, I think it's the one light bulb because just, just, I just undid one light bulb and it's not blinking anymore. Okay, I might be losing one light bulb. Okay, so now I'm going to overlap the elastic here and zigzag stitch it close and try it on and then if it fits correctly then go ahead and close that and then for the sleeves i'm going to be doing the same thing fold over that hem allowance and then um insert your elastic well sew it first insert leaving a gap insert your elastic and then um, close it off just like we did for the neckline so i'm gonna do that and that is gonna look so so cute i had to be very careful with the positioning on my flowers um and i think i did a good job i also want to try it on and see all that and make sure that all that is correctly fitted and it's going to look good i'm excited uh, now i'm going to put this aside i'm going to work on that but once i do after i do i'm also going to be working on my piecing my skirts together you all know i like to do everything at the same time that is not my skirt that's my that's my um flutter at the end which i'll also be prepping that i made sure to put a clip or a mark on my the back of my skirt so i know which one's the back um and which one's the front so i separated them by putting a little clippity there and i'm gonna grab the front and the back and face them right sides together and sew the side seams to create the skirt because once I'm done putting that together, we're going to be attaching the skirt to the bodice. And of course, I lose my, my light bulb and I also lose the light outside. The sun went behind the clouds now. So it's all getting a little darker and gloomy. All right, sew those sides. And I'm also going to prep this ruffle. And the way I'm going to prep this ruffle is I'm going to grab my pieces. And I'm going to match up one of their sides. So here's the side, the short side, and I'm matching the one short side to the next, right sides together, and so. Then I'm gonna grab this short side, make sure it's not twisted, you want it to be straight, and fold it out and match up the next ruffle. Right sides together at the short end. And then we're going to make sure it's not mixed up and then we're going to go to the first ruffle and attach it to the other side of the first ruffle also making sure it's not twisted or anything and this will create like a long piece of ruffle as you can see right here make sure it's not twisted and then we're going to sew all those sides after we're done sewing all of them together we're going to put in a basting stitch you can go ahead and hem the bottom I don't like to hem first because I want to try it on and see how long it is. Sometimes, honestly, with uh, knits, I will not even hem it. I'll leave it raw, especially if because I forgot to add a little bit of length. I try to add a little bit after I remembered, but I had already cut some pieces. And usually I always add length because I am a whole inch, um, no, a whole two inches taller than what is intended for. So I always add length. So that's another reason why I'm not hemming yet. So if it's a little bit short, then it'll give me a little extra length with not hemming. But um, uh, if you did add the length and you wanna go ahead and hem first, you can go ahead and fold over and hem. I'm gonna leave it till the end to try it on and then decide if I need that extra length and I'm gonna leave it raw 
or if I'm going to go ahead and hem. But because it's a knit fabric, it's not going to fray on you, so you could leave it raw. And I did use um, my rotary cutter, which does a really nice and neat straight cut. Um, so I don't have like, you know, curvies or whatever. So it still would look good. So on one side, on the top side, we're going to put in a long gathering stitch or you're going to gather however you want to gather because we're going to gather this up to fit the bottom of our skirt on our next step. And we're also going to attach our skirt to our bodice and then that, that will be it. So we are cooking. All right, let me finish this um, folding up these sleeves and sewing that up and putting in the clear, I mean, the elastic at the sleeve and then we'll do all that and um, we'll come back. Now, if you are doing the um, crop top version, um, you would be adding a little bit of length to the waist. And then what you will do is you will do this right here. You will attach the clear, not, not like this, but you would attach the clear, uh, not the clear. I'm sorry, you would attach the elastic to the bottom of the waist and then fold over and top stitch. So if you want some more video details on how to do that, you can check out our Ileana uh, top, crop top, um pattern video and it does the same technique that the crop top does on that video so if you want to check that out go check out that video and it shows you the technique of how to do the hem on the crop top and if you're doing the bishop sleeve um, we also have another videos other videos that have a bishop sleeve that you can go ahead and check out for that um, the bishop sleeve just needs to be gathered around the cap to fit, and then it has a um, cuff, so it's a little bit different, but not too bad. You can do it, and I think that this dress is going to be gorgeous with a bishop sleeve as well for the fall and winter coming up. Um, I'm doing the short sleeve because I live in South Georgia, and we'll still be hot, cold and hot, back and forth for the next like month or so it's been like it gets a little cool and then it gets hot again and you just you just don't know what to wear so short sleeve with a cardigan is usually what i opt for so let's go finish all this up this 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 and we'll come back to put it all together all right i'm gonna go try this on before i go close it to make sure everything fits good around the neckline all right i'm gonna continue on by sewing the ruffle together now I'm going to sew the sides of the skirt. I tried it on and it fits beautifully. I am so excited about it. I mean, I was already excited about it, but when I tried it on, I was like, yes, this is going to be so good. So I'm just going to go ahead and start back up where I stopped. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and, and hem it and leave the gap for the elastic. Last thing I'm going to do on this is to put in a gathering stitch here at the top. You can do one or two rows. Um, I'm just going to go with one row of gathering stitches all the way around. All right, I changed my mind because sometimes I do change my mind often. I'm going to do two rows. Um, it does, two rows do make a nicer gather and it doesn't take that much longer to just add another row. So let's just do that. All right, I'm super excited. I think this is going to be adorable. I'll get that elastic and just fit it through and then sew it together. And we're gonna move on here to the bodice. You can add, you can either attach your skirt to the bodice first, or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add the flutter to the skirt first and then attach it. And so I'm gonna mark my front and back just so it's easier for me to attach that flutter. <clears throat> so I'm gonna match up the sides and go to the front and then go to the back and mark it. Yo, I screwed that light bulb back in and it's not flickering anymore. I think it was just, you know, trying to give us like some effects, some special effects today to this video. Um, <laughs> and also, I don't know if you have to do with the fact that I um, was running the dryer. So the dryer was probably like, ah. anyway, y'all don't care. But, you know, it's it's background information that you may be wondering about. Um, so the light is back on. Okay, so I'm also going to grab my ruffle. 
and it's very long so I'm trying to grab it um, and I, I ma matched up there in the back where I started my gathering and I'm going to go all the way to the front. Now, because you have three pieces, you just kind of want to figure out where you want these lines to be. Do you want them to be centered front? If you do want them to be center front, then you can put one of them at the front and then fold it and find the other quarters. I'm going to have mine be like at the two sides. So it'll be like one on each side. Um, so I, I'm matching them up and going to the front. So this is going to be my front point here. And this is going to be like right here somewhere on the sides. Because what I'm going to do is then I'm going to match this front point with the back point here. Because that's that would be the back. So that's, that one that seam will be right in the back. And I'm going to match up. You know what? I'm going to mark it because I will forget which seam it is. So that's the back seam. And then I'm going to go to the sides. So that way I know exactly what my quarters are and it makes it so much easier to gather <clears throat> when you have it cut, uh, um, not cut up, when you have it marked as quarters because then you can like attach the back and then go to one side and then go to the other side and it just, anyway. And then also the two gathers work so much easier. Okay, so this is the back of the skirt right there where I put that mark. So this is my back point right there. So I'm gonna match up right sides together those back points here i'm also going to go to the next the uh, side point the quarter point and match that up here on the side and remember i told you i tried to add length this is where that happened here that's why i have this little piece hanging out we're just going to blend it in it's going to be okay there we go and then the next one is gonna be the front piece, which is right here. And let's find it on the ruffle. It's gonna be somewhere between the two front lines. So here's one, so it should be somewhere around here. Oh, there it is. Oop, there it is. And then the last one. And so now that it's like pinned to the quarter, oops, sorry. Now that it's pinned to the quarters, all I gotta do is gather from one point to the next. So I gotta gather this little area to fit in there. And we gotta start in the back cause that's where my starting point is for where I, make sure it's not, ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, it's not crooked. Oh, is it crooked? Let's not be crooked now. Okay, it's not crooked. But why did this clip come off the back? You gotta stay where you belong. Right here. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna grab the um, basting stitches here. We're gonna grab the um, ones that are going this way and I'm gonna grab my bobbin thread. Here, let's kinda, here they are, here's one, here's the other. And I'm gonna start pulling so I can gather this side. And actually, now that I thought about it, usually I gather it first before I attach the quarters because I need to gather the whole one side first. So here's the side, here's the whole side. So let's just unbuckle that one and go all the way to this one side. And you're just slowly moving that thread around to bring the gathers over so you can gather evenly. But first I'm gathering it to fit and then I'm going to um, like fix it so it's all even. All right, it looks like it's gathered to fit. Now, let me find that point again. Here's this point here. So now I can go ahead and pin this here because now I know that those gathers go over here and these gathers go over here. So even them out. Okay, so now that I even those out, see how nicely that's gonna fit? So we're gonna pin those right here, clip them 
and sew them and we're going to do the same on this side and then we'll pull the bobbin thread to the other side and do the same for the whole other side then I'm going to go ahead and this will get sewn on but before I sew this ruffle on I'm also going to go ahead and do the same I mean I'm, I'm also going to go ahead and and attach the waist the waist so I'll show you that because I like to do everything at the same time All right, little tidbit. How many of you, comment below and let me know, uh, notice the writing on my hand? I tried to scrub it off as best as I could, but I couldn't get it off. Like, it's just permanently sketched on my skin. I am super forgetful, and I was supposed to bring some soap for my husband at work, and, um, and I didn't want to forget, so I hastily wrote it on my hand. So I wouldn't forget it and now I'm regretting it because what are the odds that the word soap will not come off my hand even though I've scrubbed it with soap over and over again. Anyway, let me know below if you even noticed it or if you even notice it now. I don't know if you can see it very well but I'm just like sitting here like oh no. Oh no, my hand said soap on it. Other side now. All right, so we've got our skirt flutter ready to be attached. Oh, well, that's going to be really, really cute. Okay, and now I'm going to um, go to my um, bot, my bodice and skirt. I'm going to match up those sides and go to the front and back. That I didn't really, I had the back marked like this because I knew that this was the back of the skirt so I wanted to keep this clip here so that I knew which one was the back and which one was the front and I've got it here and then I've got my bodice and I'm also going to mark my bodice front and back so match up those sides go to the front and the back okay and then I'm going to fit my bodice into my skirt so the front of the bodice goes to the front of the skirt and I'm going to match up those notches right sides together now because this um skirt is going to be a little heavy due to the fact that um, there's that gather at the bottom i'm going to put in some clear elastic here at the waist uh, as well as what i did on the neckline so just like i did on the neckline i'm just going to fit it through as i'm sewing it on that will give this waistband a little bit of a stability so the dress doesn't just pull down and droop on me so I'm gonna do that here at the waist. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew the ruffle on and then sew the waist and we'll be done, except for, you know, I still have to put elastic on my sleeve and show you what that looks like. All right, so here's my little gap of my sleeve. I'm gonna go ahead and insert my elastic. I'm gonna go all the way around for both and then I'm going to sew it together, sew the elastic zigzag stitch it together, close that gap and we'll be done with our sleeve. All right, so let's follow all those steps just like we did with our uh, neckline. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that and show you just what it looks like. I use clear elastic and it's a quarter inch clear elastic which fits really nicely into the seam allowance. I go to where I'm going to start sewing. I place about an inch or so in the back where I can hold for stability so I can get it to get started. I put it right at the edge and I place it right under my foot and I make sure it's caught by the needles there in the back. And then um, I'm going to put it right along the edge of the knife. Now you can remove the knife if you want to, if you feel like your knife, if you don't have enough control that your knife might cut it. But it's just, this clear elastic is just going to ride right along the edge, right next to the seam allowance, uh, right on the seam allowance. So that way it's going to get trapped by the, um, um, 
by the seam allowance and it's not gonna get cut off. So I grab it here in the back and I get started. And now I don't have to grab it anymore because it's cut there on the seam allowance. I make sure that my fabric is right sides together and it is um, lined up correctly. And I am making sure that none of the elastic is getting cut um, off by the knife. It's just, um, I'm just putting the elastic like just barely a little bit in from the seam. So that way it won't get cut by the knife right here. All right, friends, we are done with this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful dress. I love the skirt, the way it just flares with a nice little ruffle at the bottom, the elasticated sleeve and neckline. I love this little band here in the waist. It kind of brings it all in and it just looks really, really nice. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please comment, like, share, subscribe. Let me know which option you're gonna do first. Are you gonna do the crop top? Are you gonna do the dress option? Are you gonna do the gather skirt, bishop sleeve? I love all of them and I can't wait to hear what you're going to be sewing up first. Um, if you sew one up, please come share with us on our Facebook page. We'd love to see it and we have a beautiful community over there of sewists. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all next time. I'm going to go do some more twirling because this is a twirl worthy dress.